People living in different parts of the world have different ways of life. In civilized countries, people follow a set pattern for daily life, like going to offices or workplaces and performing assigned duties from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. But that's not the case for everyone. In some areas of the world, there are tribes that still adhere to their unique rituals and cultural traditions, which may even form part of their religious obligations. Some tribes don't have their homes and they do not have organized towns and cities. Their lifestyle is at times very scary. It may include conflicts or clashes within a tribe and some super gory posthumous rituals we just don't understand. In today's video, we'll introduce you to some of the scariest tribes scattered around the world. Their culture and lifestyles are not for the faint-hearted, so sit tight and enjoy meeting the part of humanity that refuses to conform. North Sentinelese The aboriginals of Andaman and Nicobar residing on North Sentinel Island are one-of-a-kind tribe. They are pre-Neolithic people who've been residing on the island for more than 55,000 years, according to scientists, and are segregated from the rest of the world. During the late 1960s, attempts were made to contact them but failed. Due to their hostile behavior, ultimately, government discontinued the efforts in the mid-1990s. A buffer zone of 5 kilometers has been established around the island for protecting the tribe from diseases likely to be spread due to contact with the modern world and to ensure their sovereignty. Crossing the buffer zone is illegal. Two fishermen who were harvesting crabs illegally off the island were not seen again. A Christian preacher who went to the island also never returned. Even two fishermen who went over to the island accidentally could not come back. Tribesmen fiercely attack anyone who tries to violate their boundaries. The Batak Batak, living in northeastern Palawan, a big island in the southwest, is one of 140 indigenous groups inhabiting the Philippines. Throughout known history, Batak has been living in river valleys along the coastline of Puerto Princesa City. As per census data, there are about 450 Batak remaining. They are petite, having dark skin and curly, afro-textured hair. Researchers are not sure whether they belong to another tribe known as Ada or if they have originated from different groups belonging to Indonesia or the Andaman Islands. Their lifestyle is hunting and gathering. They grow plants from seeds and adopt a slash-and-burn farming method. They also trade with the maritime people of the Sulu region in forest and natural goods. In return, they get manufactured items. Batak men often perform different jobs for other people such as harvesting and weed clearance. It seems they have started living a settled life in small villages. Suri Tribe Members of the Suri Tribe are found in some areas of Ethiopia and South Sudan. In southwest Ethiopia, they are three groups, Tamaga, Chai, and Bailey, with a total population of 34,000. Their traditional belief system revolves around a sky deity known as Tumu. A person called Kimuru works as a mediator between the tribe members and the deity. Suri tribe in Ethiopia prefer to live in remote semi-arid plains, foothills, and valleys. They interact with other people and have enmity with groups found in their neighborhood in Sudan who attack Ethiopian lands. These rivalries have turned into a serious issue as rivals have purchased automatic weapons from warring rebels of the Sudanese civil war. Suris are proud of their distinct cultural practices such as women removing their lower teeth for becoming beautiful for getting married, piercing their lower lips, and inserting a clay plate. With increased exposure to the outer world, this practice is becoming less common. The Dislala Tribe The Dislala Tribe inhabits the western Amazon basin. Brazilian adventurer Sidney Pastuello is the main source of information about this tribe. He, along with a journalist, Paul Raphael, contacted the Dislala people for the first time in 1996. The tribe is believed to be one of the few tribes still living in isolation from the modern world. However, they experienced few violent interactions with the neighboring communities. The main tribe is limited to a population of about 150 members, whereas an offshoot has approximately two dozen people. The split in the tribe was caused when some members favored establishing contacts with the nearby settlement, whereas the majority opposed the proposal. They hunt and fight with clubs and at times also use poison darts. They reside in communal huts called malocas and work for five hours a day. The tribe practices infanticide. They also paint their bodies with red dye obtained from the ruku plant. They possess rudimentary knowledge of agriculture, whereas their preferred food includes corn, fish, birds, wild pigs, and fruit. The main cause of death in the tribe is malaria. 
Kujarino people. Kujarino is also known as the Namoles. This nomadic indigenous tribe is found in the most remote part of the Amazon rainforest and they're basically hunter-gatherers. They speak a dialect of the Peru language and are mostly concentrated in the Manu National Park in Peru's Madre de Dios region. Their current population is estimated to vary between 100 to 250, which was believed to be between 20 to 100 in the 1970s. They avoid contact with non-native people due to their experiences with Peruvian robber Baron Carlos Fitzcarl, who assisted by his army trying to slaughter members of the tribe in the upper Manu River area. The survivors fled to the remotest forest areas. In the recent past, they've been observed on several occasions. Their camps are on Las Piedras riverbanks, where they resort to fishing in the dry season. Some tribe members have contact with the outside world, as in 2013 BBC reported that some had been asking villagers for food. The Peruvian government had prohibited contact with them for ensuring their safety from modern diseases. Akunsu Tribe Akunsu Tribe is on the verge of becoming extinct as it has just four members. They live in Rondonia in Brazil and speak a peculiar Akunsu language. In the 1980s, Brazilian cattle ranchers committed a massacre and almost completely eliminated the tribe. This atrocity was committed as the ranchers believed if approached through official channels, the forest would be declared as a reserve park for indigenous people and would not be available to cattle ranchers and loggers. Remnants of the tribe are hunter-gatherers and augment their food requirements with some agriculture. In the late 1990s, official contact was made with them. They had just seven members, two men, three women, and two young girls. Simbu Tribe Chimbu or Simbu tribe is found in the central highlands of Papua New Guinea. In the early 1930s, Australian explorers gave this name to the tribe as they heard this word from the locals. It's a form of pleasant surprise in the Kumon language. They live in the rugged mountainous terrain of Chimbu province. They live in small settlements having oval houses with low thatched roofs, flattened reed woven walls and dirt floors. All men live in community halls whereas women and children reside in one place. Recently, some men and women have started living together. Pigs are their most valuable assets and are used as exchange items in death rituals, marriage ceremonies, and for gratitude to women for giving birth to children. They also celebrate a pig-killing ceremony called a bugla ingu. Hundreds of thousands of pigs are slaughtered, cooked, and distributed between tribes for maintaining relationships. Korowai Tribe Korowai or Kalufo Tribe are inhabitants of the Indonesian province of Papua, near the border of Papua New Guinea. Presently, there are about 3,000 Kalufo, and until the 1970s, they were unaware of other people outside the tribe. As per BBC, they lived in tree houses just for the benefit of overseas program makers. Their homes are built above floodwater levels. Some people believe they practice cannibalism as a form of justice. Anthropologists believe they no more resort to these practices. Mudman Tribe the Asaro tribe, which is also known as Mudman of Papua New Guinea, is a small tribe residing in a village called Garoka, located in the eastern highland province of Papua New Guinea. Its members wear traditional costumes like masks made of mud. Some people believe they were defeated by an enemy tribe and forced to escape to the Asaro River, where a man gave them ice to kill. They waited till dusk. The man who was given ice was thought to be caught, but when he rose from the mud, the enemy considered him to be a ghost and fled. People in Papua New Guinea are afraid of ghosts. When they returned to their village, the enemies were still there but fled to their village being scared of their mud masks and holding ceremonies to ward off the spirits. As per legend, they made masks from pebbles as the Asara River was poisonous. Chukchi people Chukchi is also referred to as Lauruda Wetland. They are inhabitants of the northeasternmost of Siberia in Russia. In the late 20th century, there were about 14,000 Chukchis who were divided into two main groups called Reindeer Chukchi and Maritime Chukchi. Both groups speak Laura Wetlands language but flourished in different areas. The Reindeer Chukchis live a nomadic life in tents and depend on domesticated deer herds, using them for milk, meat, pelt and transportation. The Maritime Chukchis have permanent villages and live off the sea, hunting sea mammals and fishing. The reindeer Chukchis use sledges pulled by reindeers or dogs for traveling, whereas the maritime Chukchis use boats covered with animal skins. Chukchis believe in invisible spirits and conduct shaman ceremonies for healing and divination. They also hold festivals with sacrifices. The Night Marchers The Night Marchers are part of Hawaiian mythology and are supposed to be the frightening ghosts of ancient Hawaiian warriors. 
On nights when Hawaiian gods are honored, the knights of Kanaloa appear from the burial places and rise from the ocean and move in groups to the ancient Hawaiian battlefields and sacred sites. They are average-sized persons wearing battle dresses and beating war drums. They carry clubs and spears. As per myth, they remain suspended above the ground. Their march commences in the darkness after sunset and finishes before sunrise. Sometimes they can appear in the day as they escort a dying family member to the spirit world. It's believed that anyone who looks upon them in defiance will die a violent death. Agori Tribe Agori Tribe in Uttar Pradesh, India have a unique lifestyle. They have 70 living members. They smear cremation ashes on their bodies. They also use human bones for making skull cups and ornaments. They accept death as a natural part of the human experience. They've believed in healing through purification as health can be transferred to patients in a transformative process, whereas pollution can be drawn away. They think that Agori people have superior minds and bodies. Some people consider their lifestyle against human civilization. Agoris can be found in parts of India, Nepal, and Southeast Asia. They live as a secret sect. The Cargo Cult The Cargo Cult refers to primitive societies. They consider goods and cargo from first world countries as spiritual gifts. The island of Tana in Vanuatu is considered a prominent exhibit of this cult. The American soldiers worked on a nearby island called Efate during World War II. Locals had a strong tendency to disconnect from European colonialization, but were welcomed when they saw black American soldiers accompanying the cargo. The most well-known present-day cult is the John Frum movement. Members of this cult worship an American serviceman called John Frum, who had introduced himself as John from America. Celebrations are held on the 15th of February every year. During the ceremony, men paint the words USA on their chests, raise the American flag and perform military drills mixed with dances. They also build a World War II aeroplane with a landing strip and expect that John would return with more cargo. Another nearby tribe worships deceased Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, and believe him to be a divine being. The Mursi In Ethiopian areas close to South Sudan's border, a tribe consisting of 11,500 members resides, which refer to themselves as the Mursi. They speak the Mursi language. Similar to several other East African agro-pastoralists, they have distinct spiritual and religious practices. They believe in Tumwi, which appears in the sky like a rainbow, bird, or something else. A person known as Komuru acts as a link between the tribe and their god. He protects them, their cattle, and crops. Mursi is among the last groups of Africa which still wear lip plates on their lower lips. At the age of 15 or 16, girls get their lips pierced. The tribe also participates in ceremonial dueling. Mokan Tribe The Mokan are Austronesian people found on the Murgui Archipelago, which comprises about 800 islands claimed mutually by Thailand and Burma. Some experts trace back their origin to China and believe they might have migrated about 6,000 years ago and settled on different islands in South Asia. Presently, approximately 2,000 to 3,000 Mokans live on these islands. They resort to a semi-nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle. They mostly rely on the sea for their food. They speak a distinct Austronesian language called Mokan. Their population is decreasing gradually. Being nomadic, they face immense problems related to modern immigration and property laws. They've started to be exposed to modern ways of life. Their children attend mainstream schools. The members of the tribe residing on the island of Surin prefer to live a traditional lifestyle. Recently, they've started to trade their food for local market goods. We hope you guys enjoyed learning about the unique lifestyle of these tribes. Do share your thoughts in the comments section below. We'll be back soon with more amazing and informative content. Until then, have a great time and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up.